curators, I think, have always recognized the role of imagination in visualizing, uh, conceiving of, and then actually executing the engineering of space vehicles. We're very excited with the reopening of the west end of the National Mall building to have on display a T-70 X-Wing. This is the vehicle that you would have seen in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker as piloted by Poe Dameron. And what's so exciting about this is that there aren't really that many fully built out 360 degree movie props like this. Most vehicles like this, when they're shot of late, tend to be done with CGI or computer-generated imaging. And then there might be a physical cockpit that's built to allow the filmmakers to shoot close scenes with the actors, but not necessarily building the whole vehicle. So being able to have a full vehicle that was actually screen used is a wonderfully authentic piece to be able to bring to the museum floor. For museums, objects are really central. These objects are a wonderful way to tell a story to the public that connects them and gets them hooked into the history and the science of technology. You'll recognize there are some visual differences from the T-65B, which you saw in the original trilogy with Luke Skywalker. And I think it really tells an interesting story about how one might imagine what that next generation vehicle might look like if you were going to develop this fighter series. Having a piece from Star Wars in the National Air and Space Museum really connects with the nostalgia and the affection that people around the world have for Star Wars. Part of the power of the Star Wars universe is the staying power of those characters. We have the X-Wing as a vehicle, but the X-Wing in some ways operates as a bit of a character. It's the kind of vehicle that people have an attachment for. And so we have the bonus then with this vehicle. It's not really complete unless it has an astromech droid sitting behind the cockpit. And in this case, in order to keep it true with its depiction in The Rise of Skywalker, it's R2-D2, uh, which is very visible on the back of the x wing one of the very powerful things that the Star Wars universe does is to connect across generations. You have people who fell in love with Star Wars in their youth, and now they are sharing it with their children. And these visions, these imaginations of spaceflight are so powerful that people come to us and tell us who work in the aerospace industry that they got excited about the idea of working in aerospace from seeing those visions of living and working in space in Star Wars. And so we now have children who have grown up watching this next trilogy who might start thinking themselves about new ways that they could be working in the aerospace industry or what a life in space could be. Now bringing in a borrowed, authentic, screen-used movie vehicle into the museum and hanging it from the ceiling actually takes a fair amount of work and preparation. And we brought to that work the same kind of talent and skills and people that we have for all of the rest of the artifacts at the museum. It's really a matter of thinking about how do you take a vehicle, a prop, and then turn that into something that we can safely hang above where visitors will be walking and keep the artifact itself safe. In this case, this was a vehicle that was built to stand, not to hang. And there's some reinforcement then that gets done inside the vehicle to make sure that the hanging points are really secure. We don't want stress cracks or fractures to occur because it's hanging instead of standing. And so as a curator, I always love the way that I get to participate in a much larger team of people who bring their talent and energy to this project. So it's really a collaboration between the contractors who are working with us on hanging these objects in the building, 
as well as the conservators who take care of the material soundness, the appearance of the vehicle, and our own in-house experts in collections and preservation who really were the ones who were thinking through how many hanging points we would need and what exactly the reinforcement in the building would need to be in order to hang this from the ceiling. So you really bring all of that together, the preservation, the restoration, the collections, the conservation work, uh, with the curatorial influence of thinking about what's the story that we're trying to tell. And I think part of the point of an exhibit like this is being able not only to connect with those memories that you have of seeing this vehicle on screen, but also just what an impressive and powerful image it is to get to stand next to it in person as it hangs from the ceiling. We think about conversations that we hope visitors will have as they see things next to each other, and then we think about those objects themselves as in a bit of a conversation. So I think of this as in conversation with the artifacts that we have down the hall in Destination Moon. Having the actual Columbia Command module that brought Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins back from the moon in 1969, I think gets people thinking about the impressive achievements that have already been made in spaceflight, and this then prompts them to imagine what might be possible in generations or centuries to come. So I hope that having the T-70 X-Wing in the midst of all of these real vehicles and real history starts those conversations as it is a part of a real cultural history of imagining what has been possible for spaceflight and thinking about what might be next. <laughs>